What is life? What is life? What is love? What is life? Let's find out. Congratulations, you're alive. That might not sound like a good enough reason to celebrate, but believe me, it is. It took your ancestors four billion years of evolution and hard work to get you not only where you are today, but what you are today. Let's start with where you are today. Most likely, it's this place. Planet Earth, the third rock from the sun and quite possibly the most important place in the universe. That's because it's the only place in the universe where we currently know life exists. Does life exist anywhere else in the universe? Probably, we just haven't been able to find it yet. But uh, don't worry, as soon as we do, I'll be the first one to let you know. For now, our cozy little blue planet is the only occupied home in our cosmic neighborhood. So I think it's fair to say, it's a pretty dang special place. And there isn't just a little bit of life here on Earth. No, 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 no. See, this hunk of wet rock floating through space is practically overflowing with life from the darkest depths of our oceans to the tallest mountain peaks and everywhere in between. There's even life in the middle of boiling hot springs and in frozen glaciers. It's all very impressive. But it begs the question, what exactly is life? How do we define it? What classifies something as living versus non-living? The question is way more complicated than you might think, and so is the answer. In fact, it's still being debated by a lot of people a lot smarter than me. That being said, it's generally accepted that there are eight characteristics shared by every living organism. Cellular organization, reproduction, heredity, metabolism, homeostasis, response to stimuli, growth and development, and adaptation through evolution. All living things, from humans to pine trees to mushrooms to bacteria, all share these eight traits. So next time you open your drawer and find a moldy piece of bread, you can say to that bread, hey bread, we share eight characteristics. And then you should probably throw it away after you're done talking to it like a maniac. So let's break these eight characteristics down and learn exactly what they mean. Number one, cellular organization. All organisms are made up of cells, or in the case of single-celled organisms, one cell. They're the smallest unit that can still be classified as living. Cells are often referred to as the building blocks of life, because in multicellular organisms, many different cells all come together to help keep that organism alive. The human body, for example, is made up of roughly 30 to 40 trillion cells. That's trillion with a T. What makes this even more impressive is the fact that all 30 to 40 trillion of your cells originated from just two. A sperm cell and an egg cell. And speaking of which, number two, reproduction. Put simply, life is life because life makes more life. If life didn't make more life, then life couldn't be life, you get me? Let's use humans as an example. Uh, your mom's egg cell and your dad's sperm cell came together, each carrying half of their own genetic information. Those two cells fuse to become what's called a zygote. That zygote, that single-celled organism, divided itself into two, and then to four, and then to eight, and then it kept dividing until it started to look less like a clump of cells and more like a little baby you. But that's just how we human folks reproduce. Other organisms reproduce in different ways, sometimes with two parents, sometimes with just one, like in the case of fungi and bacteria. And don't worry, we'll get into all the dirty, dirty details of fungus reproduction in a later video. I give the people what they want. Number three, going hand in hand with reproduction, is heredity. When organisms reproduce, they pass on their genetic information. These can be physical traits, like the color of a plant's flowers, or they can be behavioral traits, like a bird knowing how to build a nest without being taught how to. Heredity is simply the passing of traits from parents to offspring. Number four, metabolism. Okay. This one's important. Metabolism is simply the word that we use to describe the many chemical reactions that take place within an organism in order to keep it alive and healthy. There are three main purposes of metabolism, and we should be very, very grateful to all three of them because they keep us from dying every day. Those three purposes are the conversion of food into energy, the conversion of food or fuel into the building blocks for essential organic molecules like proteins, fats, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates, and third, the elimination of wastes, like pooping. Pooping is important. Pooping is metabolism. Number five is homeostasis. 
This is one of those words that sounds way more complicated than it actually is. When you get right down to it, homeostasis is simply the process of keeping balance within a living organism. An easy example of this is the ability of humans and other mammals to maintain a stable internal temperature regardless of external conditions. It's about 20 degrees Celsius in my studio right now, but my internal temperature is maintaining at a steady 37 degrees Celsius. If my body becomes too hot or too cold to carry out normal living functions, then the signals from a part of my brain called the hypothalamus make the necessary adjustments to warm or cool me. Homeostasis also works on the cellular level with things like water retention. If a cell absorbs too much water, then it can expand and burst but if it retains too little water, then it can shrivel up and die. Luckily, the cell membrane prevents either of these two extremes from happening in a process known as osmoregulation, which is a form of homeostasis. It's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Homeostasis keeps everything just right. Number six, response to stimuli. This is just a fancy way of saying that living things can sense and respond to changes. In biology, a stimulus is defined as a detectable change in the internal or external environment. Organisms are constantly responding to stimuli. For example, when a skunk is hungry, she'll hunt for food. When a cockroach senses a predator, it'll run away. Both predator and prey responded to stimuli. It just didn't work out too well for the prey on this particular occasion. Number seven, growth and development. That's how you get from this to this. It's not the most dramatic change, but I definitely got taller. Some organisms grow and develop in much more extreme ways, like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly or a tadpole turning into a frog. Growth is simply a young organism getting bigger as it ages. Development is a bit more complex. It's like when you reach a certain age, you start to grow hair on your... Number eight, adaptation through evolution. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my absolute favorite trait shared by all living things because without it, we wouldn't have the incredible diversity of life that we currently do on this planet. Remember way back when I was telling you about heredity? When organisms reproduce, they pass on their genetic information. Good point, Jason. But here's the thing. When genetic information is passed on from generation to generation, mutations can occur. These small changes in an organism's DNA can give it a slight advantage over other members of its species by helping it interact with its environment more productively, which in turn gives it a much better chance of reproducing and carrying its genetic information on to the next generation. To sum it up nicely, evolution is descent with modification. Evolution is incredible. It's borderline magical, and it's way too big of a subject to cover in this particular episode, but you can bet your butt that I'm gonna make an entire video dedicated to evolution in the near future. And speaking of videos that I make, please subscribe to Miller's Wildlife and check out the other videos that I make. I'm putting out new educational content every week all about the wonders of the natural world. We're gonna talk about where life came from. We're gonna talk about how life is classified. We're gonna talk about bugs and highlight every branch of the tree of life or as many as I can until I die. Have a great day, never stop evolving, and I'll see you next week.